I want to start off by showing you a video about Reverend Ralph West II. He gave a woman an STD, something that she would never be able to get rid of. And then once you see this information, I will come back and talk to you. Now, he first contacted plaintiff on social media, specifically through Facebook messaging on or about February of 2017. Defendant indicated that he was a fan and admirer of hers and would like to get to know her better. As it appeared that both had a lot in common, both in life experiences, principles, and values, plaintiff and Minister West began to communicate with each other through Facebook messaging, as well as other electronic and telephonic means, and continued to do so through May of 2017. During this time, the parties had extensive communications and conversations regarding morals, values, principles, Christian beliefs, relationships, and sexual intimacy. Plaintiff made it clear to Ralph West II that she believed in and expected honesty, truthfulness, and transparency in relationships. Plaintiff also made it clear to him that because of these foundational principles, she did not date much and was also overly protective of her health and well-being. Now, during these communications and conversations, Minister West repeatedly represented that he was a man of God, that he shared the same foundational beliefs in honesty, truthfulness, and transparency, that he had been tested in the past and that he was free and clean of any sexually transmitted diseases. Now, on or about May the 14th, 2017, plaintiff agreed to attend a church service at the church without walls and further agreed to have dinner with Minister West afterwards. After attending the church service and later the same evening, Minister West sent an Uber to pick plaintiff up and return her to his home. Now, shortly thereafter, Minister West and plaintiff went to dinner. And later that same evening, Minister West and plaintiff first had sexual relations using protection. Following the first encounter, Minister West and plaintiff continued to date and engage in sexual relations on occasions with protection and on other occasions without protection. On or about the end of March 2018 and within a few days of having engaged in sexual relations with Minister West, plaintiff began to have pain in her genital region along with painful urination. In on or about the beginning of April 2018, plaintiff presented to her obstetrician and gynecologist with this sudden onset of symptoms that she had never experienced before. Her OBGYN ordered an IgG blood test, suspecting that the plaintiff had been recently infected with the herpes simplex virus. Now, on or about April 16, 2018, plaintiff's OBGYN informed her that she had tested positive for herpes simplex 2, aka genital herpes. Plaintiff promptly confronted defendant the only person with whom she had had any sexual intimacy with for the past three years with the news. And Minister West initially denied being infected with genital herpes and denied infecting the plaintiff. And after accepting proof that the plaintiff had tested negative for genital herpes in the past and had not had any sexual relations with any other individual for at least two years prior to meeting Minister West, he went ahead and admitted to the plaintiff that he knew he had genital herpes before meeting the plaintiff and that he had been infected by the mother of his son. The plaintiff further alleges that subsequently and compounding Minister West's concealment and misrepresentation, he attempted to intimidate her to remain silent by both in thought and with physical intimidation. Minister West made suggestions to plaintiff that Christians don't take other Christians to court and that Christians turn the other cheek and forgive. He also told her to marry me 
as no other man will want to be with you. And your family and father would be devastated by this news. And so the verbal intimidation turned to physical intimidation. Minister West attempted to shame the plaintiff into silence by contacting her father and informing him of the plaintiff's genital herpes infection. Minister West had an officer approach her and the officer threatened that if plaintiff did not remain silent, Minister West would reveal videos of the plaintiff that allegedly portrayed her in a negative light, end quote. And so plaintiff sued under the civil legal theories of battery infliction of bodily injury, intentional infliction of emotional distress, fraud through intentional concealment, and fraud through intentional misrepresentation seeking monetary relief in the amount of over $1 million. The things that we look at for cases like these are essentially four things. It's the defendant in fact. You know that you've seen the information about Reverend Ralph West II and how the woman ended up getting the STD from him. What I want to focus on is learning from her mistake. It's very important that as women, we learn from our own mistakes but we can also learn from other people's mistakes. And she, you know, he met her on Facebook. She really didn't know anything about him. And then during their course of conversations, he's bringing up the topic of having a sexual relationship and how does she feel about that? And she's telling him how she feel about that. First of all, if he's a reverend, if you, if you are a woman, and a person come up to you and they're especially as a reverend because myself i hold a reverend and a reverend pastor bishop i hold them in a higher esteem than i do the average person even though everyone is human and they can make mistakes the reason reason i hold them in a higher esteem is because of the position they put themselves in in that position comes a lot of responsibility because a lot of people will trust a reverend where they would not trust an ordinary man. A lot of people will trust a pastor where they wouldn't trust an ordinary man. And I think that's what happened in her situation. If she would have just met any old person on the internet, she may not have taken it to that level. But by him being a reverend, by him being a, a pastor, she probably felt safe with him. And he did put that out there like, you know, I'm a man of God. But the first thing she should have thought about or the first thing you should think about is one, if anyone comes to you and they say, I am a man of God, whether they're an individual that you meet in church or someone you meet out, you know, just in everyday life and they're saying, I'm a man of God. Or if, you know, especially if they are a pastor, a reverend, a bishop or whoever they may be, if they're saying, I am a man of God, then they should represent God. One of the things that's stated in the Bible is that is that we should not have sex outside of the covenant of marriage. And by him even having that conversation with her, he was wrong and she should have picked that up as a red flag or a warning flag. Because if he's that comfortable talking to her as a reverend about, you know, her you know, a sexual relationship, then she should have thought about how many other people, how many other women did he feel comfortable enough to have that conversation with as well. So that should have let her know that this is something, I'm not the first person he called up or got in contact with over, you know, over um, the internet to have this discussion or this topic of the conversation. So that should have warned her to, you know, to stay away from him or at least put in her mind, I'm not going to do anything with him because this is a pattern of his because he's too comfortable having this conversation with me and he really don't know me and I really don't know him, but he's a reverend and he's supposed to hold these laws in high esteem that God put in place, but he's not doing that. That's one thing that we can learn from as women. Never get comfortable with a person's title. Regardless of who they are, as a woman, you have to always protect yourself. 
You have to always be on your P's and Q's. You have to always be mindful. And a lot of time, depending on who the person is, like I said, if they're a reverend or if they're a businessman or if they're, you know, someone on the internet, someone on TV, some, you know, a musician or whoever they may be, a lot of times women will let their guys down because they're looking at, oh, he said he wouldn't do anything to hurt me. Oh, he, you don't know him. And plus, he's just an ordinary man. Every man is flawed. Every woman is flawed. There's no perfect person out there. So you have to always think of yourself first and say, how am I going to protect myself in this position? You always have to have a boundary that you're not willing to cross for anyone. And you always have to have an out clause in your mind. If I do go out to dinner with them and a the topic turns to this, how am I going to get out of it? If I say, okay, I'm going to go to lunch with you or go to movies, that's all I want to do. I don't want to go to your place after. You have to have all this set up in your mind. So when you find yourself in these situations, you're not kind of like stuck and don't know what to do and you kind of go with the flow. You have to always have your boundaries set before you enter in any type of relationship, any type of conversation, going out with a person, anything like that. And you can't let the titles get to you. I look at everyone as the same, you know, I don't, if you, like I say, I try to respect everybody because I want to be respected, but you're not going to impress me by a title. You're not going to be impressed me by your position on a job or anything like that, because I want to know who you are as a person, how are you going to treat me as a person and how you treat other people as, you know, people, are you respectful for them? Or do you have a sense of arrogance about you that you're rude to other people? And then that might rub off onto me. You might end up being rude to me. So it's like you have to have that mindset as a woman when you're dealing with a man. Because a lot of times they run the same game on you that they ran on the, the last woman because they see, hey, it's working. I found I found a niche. I found something that works. And I'm going to keep using it. And if it don't work on this one, oh, well, I'm going to go to the next one. So it's going to work on someone. And that's what he sounds like he is. That he just had this thing where he gets on online, he meets a woman, he make her feel comfortable, and then they end up hooking up at some point. So you have to think about what your standard is as a woman and what you will and will not do. And two, you notice she kept talking about how she hasn't dated anyone because she's concerned about her health. She don't want to catch any STDs. She don't, don't want any diseases. But yet, she did not hold true to that by every time she did sleep with him, making sure that she was protected by him having a condom. Because she didn't know if he had anything or not. Just because he said he's clean, because he's a reverend, because he's a man of God, he's clean, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, being a man of God, being a reverend, don't stop you from catching anything if you're going against what God's saying you should do. You're, you're susceptible just like anyone else. So that's another, you know, caution that she should have thought about or red flag or that women in general should think about when a man is saying that to you. Oh, I'm clean. Let's go to the clinic together. Let's get tested together. Show me your last test. When was the last time you got tested? I want to see that. You know, get, you can't just go by their words. So it's always, you have to always say, okay, I'm not, you know, I'm going to make sure I'm protected at all costs, especially if that's something that you're worried about, your health. And as always, I want to use scripture. And the first one is James 1.22 ESV. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. So once again, you cannot say I am a Christian but you don't live by the word. You hear the words, you know the scriptures, you know all this stuff, but you're not living by it. You're not walking in it. And so that's what both of them did in this situation. She was saying that, you know, she has certain standards and things like that. He's a reverend, so he really knew better. And then she should have questioned him as a reverend. Why are you talking to me about this? Didn't God say this, that, and the other? Why are you doing this, you know? This, this is sex outside of the marriage. This is fornication. This is something that we should not be doing because God considered it a sin. But she didn't look at him 
in that way to question him like that, to wonder why him as a reverend wants to hook up with someone that he's just meeting over the internet. Because that, that no time she spoke about them, you know, like getting in, involved in a relationship, dating, marriage, or anything like that. It was just that they talked on, over, over the internet, over the phone, different things like that. He invited her to church. She came to church. Then they were supposed to go out to dinner, but instead he sent the car to take her, to bring her to his house. And so that should have been something that she should have said, no, I'm not coming to your house. This is my first time meeting you. But instead she went on. And like I said, she probably felt safe being in his environment at church and, and feeling like, well, okay, he's, he's probably a good man. He's probably not lying. He's probably not telling the truth. But you can't just go by that. You got to look at the whole picture because he's lying by saying he is a reverend and he's a man of God, but he's not upholding God's word. So he already told a lie. And then the second thing I want to look at as far as scripture goes is um, Philippians 2, 3. And this is also an ESV. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourself. This man knew without a doubt that he had STD. He had STD. He had, you know, herpes. And he knew that it's something you cannot get rid of. You're going to have it for the rest of your life. And he never once thought about how it will affect her. If I give this, if I pass this on to her, how is it going to affect her? He had selfish ambition because he only thought about what he wanted to get out of the situation. And there's also another woman that he also, after, her, after this woman, he also infected another woman. He gave another woman an STD and was lying about that, was telling her, well, I don't know how you got it. You know, you probably got it from someone else. But the whole time he know for a fact he had it. And he gave it to us. So that lets you know he has a pattern. He doesn't care. If he's not stopped by someone, he's going to continue to do the same thing and spread it on and, and keep continue to give this to other passes out to other women. That's why it's important that you do look at people as far as what they're saying to you and how they're actually moving, who they are. Because if you're coming at me and you're saying that you're in a certain position, you don't believe in this, you don't believe in that, or you, you know, you're handling your, you, you talking one way, but you're living your life a different way, then that is something you need to pay attention to as young women out there. Don't always just go by what a man is saying. Spend time and see how he's actually living. Understand this person for who he is, not for the person that he portrayed over the phone, not for the person that he's portraying in public, not for the person that he's portraying on social media. Get to know the real person before you go do anything with them to see who they truly are. And, and, and a lot of this stuff can be avoided by doing that. So like I said, I'm not passing judgment on her because that could ha happen to anyone, you know, because you could be doing everything right. You could be with a person that's out there, you know, sleeping with someone else and then bring you back something as you know, that could be your husband out there or your wife out there and they bring you back something and you didn't do anything wrong. So that's why I'm not passing judgment. But as women, we need to put ourselves first and think about being safe and doing things safe so you don't find yourself in the position where you are catching the disease that you can't get rid of, that you're going to have for the rest of your life. You know, she sued him for one, $1 million, and I think they settled for about $2.4 million. But, um, you know, I don't know if he paid that or not. 